I'm really grateful to, to be here with you, and I have perhaps just a few minutes of, of comments to make. Uh, I'm also anxious to hear from others. I was driving down uh, Broadway by the, the New World Trade Tower, and my mind went back to 9-11 for a bit. Now, I'm a Clevelander, and I had a friend for many years from Pittsburgh by the name of Mr. Rogers, who some of you will only know, if you do know him at all, from uh, old TV reruns of Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. He was a guy who really devoted his whole life to being a role model for young people to teach them respect and compassion and kindness. Uh, he was a graduate of Princeton Theological Seminary. He never preached. He felt his whole calling in life was to help young people enter into a world where they could see the details in tone of voice, in facial expression of what it is to be good and generous and kind and respectful to another human being. So uh, Mr. Rogers was interviewed right after 9-11 by a New York Times reporter. The reporter asked him a pretty thoughtful question. Mr. Rogers, what should parents tell their children? Mr. Rogers paused and then he said memorably, tell the children to keep their eyes on the helpers. And you know, in today's world, it's 14 years later, we still have our problems, human violence and injustice and absolute chaos, all the harmful things that we see as a kind of constant litany on the TV news, things that are really unspeakable. It's still good to keep in mind old Mr. Rogers' comment, uh, keep your eyes on the helpers. He had a mom who uh, was a real good influence on him, and we used to talk about this. I, I had a very Irish mother named Molly McGee. That's pretty Irish, right? And uh, when I was a kid growing up, we lived on a pretty lonely street. I had an older brother and sister. They were very close, but I was always the guy who was left out. And so on a quiet, somewhat blue afternoon, uh, my mom would always tell me, well, Stevie, why don't you go out and do something for somebody? And that's what I did, help Mr. Muller uh, rake the leaves or Mr. Stanton paint the porch. And I discovered at a very young age that there was this kind of buoyancy that followed from just uh, small acts of engagement that were helpful to other people. So uh, I spent many years of my life studying this scientifically. It's a great study that was started at the University of Berkeley in California in the Bay Area in the mid-1920s. And they looked at 312 year olds, they call them preteens. A hundred of the 300 had a highly generous motivation in life. I want to do things to contribute meaningfully to the lives of others. I want to use my gifts to be helpful. The other two thirds were more self preoccupied, shall we say. And then the scientists followed these individuals over a 50 year period. Every 10 years, they gave them happiness interviews, they looked at their health records. And it turns out that that one-third, the preteens, were much lower in depression levels. They were much happier. They were much more resilient. They had lower rates of heart disease. And now, interestingly enough, they're well into their late 90s. But two-thirds of the ones who were still alive come from the one-third who, as 12-year-olds, said, I want to use my gifts to make a difference in the world. So the point is, you know, helping young people to get involved is great for the world around them, for all the people they help. But as a side effect, let's just call it a byproduct, not even something directly intended. As a side effect, it's also good to be good. And this shines a protective halo that follows a young person their whole life long, with exceptions occasionally, because obviously it's a generalization. And sometimes someone in their 20s who's very generous and good will get a serious diagnosis or have an accident of some kind. But as a scientific generalization, it's good to be good. And that's. Uh, that's the truth of it, and it confirms not only moral and spiritual wisdom, uh, but it confirms what I think most of our mothers know anyway. Thanks.